Star Wars Theory reveals Rise of Skywalker set up Ray's next movie and Kylo Ren's return to life. Welcome everyone to Rants or Us. As always, guys, if you enjoy our content, please like and subscribe. So what do you think about a new Ray movie? I positively hate the idea of it. And I'm pretty sure most of y'all out there hate the idea of it too. But guess what? Lucasfilm doesn't care if 99.9999999% of the population hates Ray, they still are going to push it because we got to push away from the patriarchy and we have uh, Anakin Skywalker and Luke Skywalker and go more towards a woman-centered Star Wars with Ahsoka Tano and Ray Skywalker. Hate even saying Ray Skywalker together, but that's where they've gone with this. Now, I have no problem with Ahsoka. I have no problem with the upcoming Ahsoka series. I'm actually really looking forward to it, to be honest. But where does this go? Like, it feels like what they're trying to set up, and in this article, they go ahead and talk about it, about maybe bringing Kylo Ren and maybe making that love story with Rey because of the breaking of the netherworld uh, because of Palpatine's return. Now, they say in this article, I'll just, instead of reading it all, I'll just summarize it for y'all. They say in the article, because the veil of life and death is thin in Exegol, Palpatine was able to, Spirit was able to return. Now, that makes sense to a certain extent, but I guess it was a clone body he was in. But I don't know. I still don't like that idea. I didn't like the idea of them bringing back Palpatine in the first place. But the idea that this is how they're going to set up a Kylo Ren return is just excruciatingly painful to me. Let's read just a little bit of this article. I'm not, I've summarized part of it, but I do want to read some parts of it. It says, The rise of Skywalker seems to change the rules on who can return and influence the physical world from the netherworld. You know who returned. Han Solo. And they returned Han Solo because they wanted to get people in the seats. Not because they felt like it was a good idea for Star Wars lore, but because they wanted to get people in the seats. And in the end, people loved it. And then they leave the theater and they're like, wow, that don't make any sense. Though they don't appear physically, dozens of Jedi call out and support Rey in her final duel with Palpatine at the end of the film. Now, I actually didn't have a problem with that. And I'll tell you the reason why I didn't have a problem with that is because, you know, with the way the Force, I guess, worked, I remember, I think it was in the prequels when all the Jedi were being uh, destroyed in Order 66. I think it was, uh, I believe it was, uh, um, oh, who was it? Um, I can't even think of who it was uh, uh, that could feel the the death of the Jedi. So I guess it wouldn't shock me if, uh, oh, it was Yoda. Um, I guess it wouldn't shock me that they might go down that route. Because that that kind of makes sense to me. I, I don't necessarily have a problem with that. There's so many other things I have a problem with. Like uh, the Skype call that was Kylo Ren and Rey in, the, the, what was it, The Rise of Skywalker. Um, nevertheless, the Jedi voices Rey heard managed to reach out to her despite it being impossible, which hints that the Force may have undergone a massive change before the rise of Skywalker occurred. Now, if they wanted to go down that route, they should have made that happen near Exegol. And if they made it near Exegol, then you could say, oh, well, it's because the force, I mean, the uh, the veil is thin uh, to the netherworld. And that was how something along those happens. And I guess that's kind of what maybe you could still claim. And that wouldn't be a bad idea to claim that. Hopefully they will make that canon where that will make some sense. Uh, the only thing that didn't make sense, of course, was Han Solo coming back. Uh, as if the dozens of Jedi calling to Rey wasn't proof enough that something changed in the Rise of Skywalker, Han Solo also returned in a pseudo-vision to help comfort his son. While Han Solo isn't a Force ghost, it breaks Star Wars rules 
for him to return to the netherworld in any capacity. And while some have argued Kylo Ren merely imagined his father, Han's realistic presence says otherwise. I wish they would make it canon that that was just a dream. Uh, from a production standpoint, his return was purely to bring Harrison Ford back and excite fans. But from a canon perspective, his return from the netherworld combined with the forces right here suggests an irrevocable change to the force itself. It is one of the few big events that could have caused such a massive change in the Force is Palpatine's resurrection, Palpatine cheating death and returning to his scarred and deformed body, win against Star Wars' natural law, and in doing so, many have broken the separation between life and death itself. Now, there have been, in Legends, specific Sith that have, do, that have done that. Uh, Darth and Dadu, um... Marco Ragnos, and I think it was XR Kuhn, have also kind of done something similar to what Palpatine did. So it's not like so out there for that to happen. I just thought it was a bad idea to bring Palpatine back. They need to move on from him, kind of like what they're kind of doing with the Ahsoka series, even though I think Palpatine is to make a guest appearance. Uh, this would explain why the Jedi voices were able to break through the netherworld and strengthen Ray, and would also help rationalize how Han Solo managed to appear in front of his son at the ruins of the second Death Star. In other words, Palpatine may have permanently changed how the Force works. I pray that isn't the way. That just doesn't that doesn't set well with me. Because of the planet's strong connection to the Force, Palpatine chose to resurrect his Force spirit on Exegol. However, since the veil between the netherworld and the physical world was thin in Exegol, it may have torn or been damaged during Palpatine's return. Judging by the rise of Skywalker, general disregard for Star Wars canon, I love that. It's unlikely Disney or the writers plan for Palpatine to break the netherworld. However, by running with this plot line, they can help fix some of the problems of the rise of Skywalker while simultaneously creating a new threat for Ray to deal with in her new film. Don't bring... You know what? If you're going to have a Ray film, don't bring back Palpatine. Please do not bring Palpatine back. Uh, keep somebody dead. I don't want a Dragon Ball Z world in Star Wars. As is the case with much of Disney's new Star Wars media, Ray's new Star Wars movie will likely fix many of the Rise of Skywalker's plot holes. Well, if they accidentally cause the plot holes, they're probably not going to accidentally fix them as well. Because I don't think these writers know enough about Star Wars to even know that they're making plot holes. The Mandalorian has already begun when explaining how Palpatine managed to cheat death in the first place, but Ray's new movie will likely deal with the consequences of Palpatine's actions. If the veil between the physical world of Star Wars and the netherworld of the Fourth has been torn, then even stranger interactions could occur between the living and the dead. In fact, it could pave the way for Star Wars to bring back almost any character it chooses for Ray's film. That would be a nightmare situation. I, I, I pray that doesn't happen. This theory helps explain why the potential book could be for uh, Ray's Star Wars film. The Force has likely become even more unstable in the 15 years since Palpatine broke the veil to the netherworld. It may be that Rey has set herself on the quest for of repairing the damage in the force he caused, which would send her on a similar journey to be one Yoda took in Star Wars, The Clone Wars Season 6. During the arc, Yoda was guided by Qui-Gon to find where life began in the galaxy and encountered five for force priestesses who test him and train him in the force. Uh, I mean, what can you say about that? <laughs> yeah, it's just for them to make a love story, and it wouldn't shock me if that ends up actually happening. Um, they're wanting to bring back... They know that the, the new characters they create suck, so they're going to try to milk all the old ones as much as possible. Um, it would not shock me if... We get to see the world in between worlds when it comes to Ahsoka series because, you know, that would kind of make sense because 
you know, she actually experienced that. And um, I could see maybe that being a way that they could maybe uh, help bring Palpatine back in the future. Or explain it away. It wouldn't shock me if this Ahsoka series proves to be the thing that explains how Palpatine gets back. I really do believe that. I think this will be the series that will explain it all. Whether we like it or not, the explanation is another thing. But we will probably get an explanation in that. I don't like this. I don't like the idea of a Ray movie. I don't like the idea of Kylo Ren returning, even though to a certain extent I wouldn't mind him returning simply because he could carry on the Skywalker lineage and maybe kill Rey. I mean, that's kind of how I'm hoping. Uh, But maybe kill her because she took his name. I don't know. Or his family name. Let's hope that's the case, even though his name's Solo, just in case y'all write that, get it. But still, he does have Skywalker blood in him. As always, guys, thank y'all so much for watching, and let me know what y'all think. Let me know what y'all think of this. A Ray movie. A Ray return. A Ray Kylo return. Thanks for watching. Take care.